On this episode, I'm hunting mule deer with my bow. I'm starting my hunting season off in Utah during the mild weathered mid-August, and I run into a few minor mishaps along the way. Then I finish things off hunting the Marias River in North Montana, where the temperatures are just a little bit cooler, like 80 degrees cooler. Let's go ahead and make this deer dead. That was dang fun. Let's go find my arrow. I'm back. I'm up here, boy. Welcome to Mordor. I bet you want to see him, don't you? Boom. Look at that guy. I'll tell you this right now. I lose another big buck like that to these damn cameras. Patience is definitely a virtue that I have. We're lazy enough. This thing's a tank. It's a bad day right there. Every year it seems like my first adventure of the fall hunting season is generally an archery hunt for velvet mule deer. Normally, I'm hunting the high deserts of Nevada, but this year I wasn't lucky enough to draw a tag in the areas that I want. So here I am. Luckily for me, I had a backup plan. I had my good friend Riley Warwood at the bow shop in Nephi put me in for one of his favorite units in Utah. I've never hunted in Utah before, but I've always wanted to. My late summer schedule just never really allowed for an additional state to hunt. But this season, I'm finally in. And needless to say, I'm pretty dang excited. sitting here just laying down behind my backpack glassing up here all of a sudden I heard something grazing munching on the grass and I just thought maybe it was some cows coming up and then all of a sudden it got quiet and then like right behind me and so I slowly turned around and there was a doe and literally eight feet away from me she just was like, what the heck? <laughs> That's funny. Well, <sighs> viewfinder broke. My viewfinder on my, my little flip out, which helps me to film, you know, different angles and obviously to get focus when I'm talking to the camera. It's gonna make filming this hunt almost impossible. Like filming long distance stuff, that's not a big deal. Filming creative shots or anything close is not a big deal. But I can't play back video and double check anything. And if I'm stalking a deer, there's absolutely no way to see be looking through that little teeny tiny square to stalk a deer. Bummer. Well, I'm gonna sit here till dark, glass, see if I can even find a good buck. I've seen a couple smaller bucks. In the morning, I'll, I've got another spot that I'm gonna glass for a sink because the sun will come up from this side. It's too hard to glass into the sun. See what I see? Either strap a GoPro to my head and get after it, make a stock and just bag the big camera, or didn't expect it to go bad. I've used this camera for two years now. So maybe I should have expected it to go bad because I have used it for two years. Don't know what this is getting, whatever. Filming an entire hunt this way is probably going to be near impossible, 
but I've decided to make the best of being here and take this added challenge in stride. I guess I'll do what I can and see what happens. Later, dudes. See you tomorrow. There's a decent three by four up here. His four side is really good. Good, good deep forks and everything, but he's up here with another smaller buck. Pretty easy spot to get at. I'm gonna hike up just a little bit farther so I can see this other little basin, see if there's anything any bigger. And then I'll try to keep a watch on these, see where they head to in bed, and then see if the siren goes off. Not exactly sure if he was a four by four like he is on that one side, no question, but I'll let the thermals settle a little bit and then work my way in and see if I can get in on this buck a little bit. With a half-broken camera and knowing that this might be my only chance at a relatively easy stock, I'm going to strap a camera to my head and get after it. The terrain is proving to be just a little more rugged than I previously thought, but I still think that I can make a solid play. Without knowing exactly where they went to bed, I'm gonna have to take the conservative route. I've gotta wait a little bit longer for the thermals to settle and then go in and make my move. Straight up the mountain and around the backside of where I think that they're gonna be. The winds have totally died off and I'm quickly losing confidence in this stock. And so I'm going to take an even wider route than I had originally planned. Once in the zone, I'll shed my pack and close in.
That was a bummer. I can't tell you how, uh, how I'm feeling right now. Been shooting so good lately too. All summer, shooting awesome. Shooting at 50 and 60. Tacking with broadheads. Where I messed up, I had the yardage because I had plenty of time to range them. And then they stepped out and then turned. And in my mind, I thought he's farther because he was probably only a body's length farther. I mean, that's a few inches a drop. So I held right at his, right at the top of his rib cage. And uh, man, if it was any closer, it would have given him a haircut. Just. Left and right was great, just, just over him. I just have got to figure out a way to focus on the shot. Um, it's so hard to just be thinking of camera and bow. I'm not making an excuse, but it's so damn hard to do it both. Those of you that have tried it, you know. Those of you that have never tried it, you don't know how damn hard this is. Oh wow. I mean, I made the snake down in there. Hey, we're missing an arrow right there. Where did he go? Let's go see if we can find it. I now find myself in the remote northern plains of Montana, standing on the upper banks of the Marias River. I don't really know why I'm up here this far, other than for Brother Boyd to get off by sending me to yet another Montana garp. He claims that he's seen big bucks up in here, so I've gone through the necessary rings of fire with the state management to secure myself a spot through the Montana lottery draw. It's a different kind of cold when you're hunting this far north. And with a fresh layer of snow on the ground, this is shaping up to be an awesome hunt. I've looked over the area extensively with my Onyx maps to be sure of where the property boundaries are and to pick a few vantage points where I can set up and glass. When I kind of get to that little bend, work my way around and back to where that little buck was kind of coming out, just in case there's some more bucks with him. Then I can also look down into those um, cottons a little bit better and glass into there. Kind of in whitetail mode. I was expecting, you know, to see whitetails in here, not necessarily mule deer. So um, if that's a whitetail buck, I'd go after him. But whereas a mule deer is just a little three by, doesn't really interest me that much. So winds have calmed down a lot. So I gotta be a little bit more careful with my sound.
It is mid-October, so. This in the Midwest, I wouldn't even be hunting, but considering I'm up here on the Canadian border in Montana. Snow on the ground, obviously. Figured the deer would be moving. I'm just kind of sitting, there's a trail right here below me, and I can see I don't know, a quarter of a mile up the river. And the winds have dropped quite a bit, so there's not a whole lot of cover noise. So I figured I'd just get down in this little pinch, funnel area, and uh, get something to eat and drink. And I'm just gonna sit here till dark. stay up on these buttes again in the morning and glass. Just see if I can't see a buck going into a bedding area or something. It's all I can do. 8,000 acres all to myself. I mean, I have this whole river bottom all to myself. Not a soul in here, but it just seems dead. Heard something. Oh, I hear something crossing the river. She crossed over into the other side that I can't get to. And then that the same little three by three from last night. It's down there. Same exact spot again. So we might have to go after it. Beautiful morning. All right, I'm now four days into this and I still haven't seen the size of whitetail buck that I'm after. So I'm gonna do what any civilized, organic meat-eating killer would do. I'm gonna head down after that three by three buck and try to put an arrow in it. I've gotta head home in the next day or two. I didn't come this far or freeze my butt off this much to go home empty. So here we go. Look back at the footage, missed him by a mile. I mean, probably a good thing I missed that little deer. He was cool. I would have been stoked to drill him, but once he was on edge, he got me. That was fun. Dang fun. This is one of those bad times when you lose your confidence and uh, probably cutting out of here earlier than I should. But What do you do? It just seems dead. <laughs> On 
On this trip, I just got beat. Beat by the bucks that after a week's worth of hunting, I failed to find. Beat by the weather and the cold. And beat by myself. I rarely talk myself into going home early from a hunt. But in this case, one of the few drawbacks of hunting alone got to me. Hunting with a friend, you can usually talk each other into sticking it out for just a few days more. But when it's all riding on your back alone, there's only one person in the end to make the call. Busted myself. Damn camera. Couldn't tell that I was chopping my head off.